Another thing that you mentioned earlier that I wanted to touch on too, that I want you to elaborate a little bit on, is all those Olympians that came out of Gene's gym. Um, Gene started his gym, if I'm not mistaken, in the mid-90s? Yes. Out of, out of Oak Cliff? In Oak Cliff. In Oak Cliff. And, um, Which is I, Dallas. It's a, it's a suburb it's in a Dallas. It's a suburb in Dallas. And I have the names written, but I think I'm going to be able to mention them right now. Um, Luis Yanez, which is a 108 pounder, right? Uh -huh. well, he, um, he was a bad boy. He, 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 my respect, I believe that when the Olympi when the Cubans were beating everybody, dominating everybody, he's the only one that beat the Cubans. He is the only one that beat the Cubans. What's his nickname? Uh, Luis... Uh, 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 Hanson? Is it Hanson? No, 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 that's Hector. That's but Hector. Not, that's the, uh, the Latin legend. The Latin they got him Latin legend because he beat the Cubans. And the, the they, Cubans. Were, they called him La Leyenda, and that's why. And I've tried to do a little bit of research, so I think 2008 might have been when he was competing for the Olympics, uh, maybe? I believe so. Maybe? I believe so. Okay, and then uh, and, and in talking to Hector, Hector said that he trained him as a pro. Hector. Once Luis turned pro, that Hector was actually his trainer. Yeah, Hector was his trainer even, even as an amateur. Oh, even as an amateur. Even as an amateur. Hector was his trainer as an amateur. And then uh, after that, was uh, he, he, still, he still trained him even as a pro, yes. And then, okay, so 2008, we jumped to 2012, Errol Spence. Errol Spence came out of, came out of that gym. He was, he was gone already, though, a year. When, he, when Errol Spence left our gym, I believe he was ranked number third in the world in the amateurs. And then uh, when he left, I think he had left just right before the Golden Gloves or something like that. The National Board, something like that. And then uh, he lost. He came in second in the finals, and then he went back, I believe, again, and then he won. He won, and then he went on from there to to the to Olympics. But he, he was he was there. Right. He was, there. he was made there. He was there. Yeah. Uh, Acosta. He's he, talking about uh -huh. well, the next one would have been a uh, uh, Francisco Martinez. I have that one on my list Francisco too. Francisco Martinez. Talk to us about him. He was he was a uh, so Francisco Martinez was at several gyms before. Uh, younger. At Irving Powell, well, we were at Irving Powell too. Went to Viveros, Viveros Boxing Gym in Oak Cliff. Um, man, he just started progressing a lot. Very, very, very good. Um, he was what, a, what weight? I believe he was a one, he was Shakur Stevenson's weight. Okay. And uh, he was, you know, whatever happened, I don't know what, I, I didn't know, but it's none of my business. Sure. You know, the father took him somewhere else, to, back to Irving. And uh, Francisco was on the verge to be an Olympian. He was one fight away from being an Olympian. Uh, so you're telling me he went into a tournament, he won a bunch of matches, and then he just needed the final he just to win? The, uh, not the final to win, just one fight to win. One fight to win. One fight to win. And then he becomes qualified for the team? He would have been the Olympian, just like the way the 132 pounder here was. Uh, I forget his name, uh, from, from here, from LA. But uh, you know, at that time too, he had also just left. And, you know, all the stuff that he was doing stuff, you know, it was coming from the gym, from the gym. It's from our gym. That's what got him there. But, uh, like I said, they, you know, whatever reason they left, they left. And sure. It is what it is. But uh, that's another kid, uh, Virgil. Virgil was up there. 2016. He had a chance. But then they changed the age state of him, so he couldn't. Uh, he, he didn't have. He was like three months shy, three and a half months shy of, a, of being uh, too young to go. And then uh, actually, it was more than that. Then they realized that Shakur Stevenson couldn't go, and they changed it. Indeed. So, so Shakur Stevenson could go uh, age-wise. And then uh, yeah, and then uh, we. I used to uh, me and Beltran. Actually, I, I trained uh, Acosta when he was uh, younger. Started him, had him, and. Uh, but Brian, when he came to, you know, he, he took over, he helped us and that. And uh, another kid that was very, very, very talented. Very talented. Uh, but some people grow up and they uh, they think they know it all and they don't want to listen to you no more. And uh, one thing I've learned is that, uh, you know, uh, you can have all these guys and, you know, they come and go, but my son will always be there. And uh, I started noticing certain things with my son, like, not saying, you know, not, not, I just felt like I wasn't putting enough attention because I was just giving it to, to someone else. And then I just started noticing something that he was being on too much on, and that's because of the lack of attention that I was giving him. So, uh, I just, it wasn't worth it for me anymore. Uh, so I went and I, I stuck with my son 100%, and uh, that was it. That's, uh, we had another kid that was pretty good, uh, but 
it's just uh, these guys, man. Once they, they, a lot of some of these kids, and I'm sure it's not just us. There's a lot of everywhere else. You know, they, you know, they get to a certain point way up there that they forget the people that take them there. And it's not that saying that without us, they're nothing. Not, not that. But sometimes without a certain people, that certain person or that certain group you have. They're the ones that take you as far as you get. But that, that's just that's just the way, you know, certain people, I guess. So. But yeah, but we've had a lot of success in that gym. We've had a lot of success, and that's, that's uh, it's not a coincidence. If you if you have somebody from 08, 2012, 2016, and you just keep producing Olympians, it's not a mistake. You, yeah, you produce Olympians, you're producing national champions consistently, consistently, consistently. You're, you always have somebody ranked the number two or, or, or number one in the nation consistently. That, that's not by accident. That, that's not by accident. I mean, you have a good gym. And, and a lot of that comes from Gene Viverbo. I mean, and, and Wayne Maddox. Everybody forgets about Wayne, Coach Wayne. Uh, Coach Wayne Maddox was uh, was Gene's uh, left-hand guy, a uh, guy that was uh, made you work hard, made you hit the mitts real hard. Uh, uh, he, he's just a... Uh, a very, very, very good guy. That's you know that again. He's like what Hector is with me. Wayne is with our gene. They complement each other, and uh, that, that's what makes our gym work. And we don't feel like one's better than the other. Hell, when I got there, new to their gym, and, and uh, I remember uh, Gene and Wayne both uh, gave me the mids and told me, "Hey, you're gonna do mids," and I was like, "Okay." So I go in there and they fucking throw a row for me to do miss with a row. I've never done some uh, miss with a southpaw, really. Never really. So I was like, fuck. And I told them, southpaw never really played those shit. You know her. So they made me. So, uh, so I did miss a few times with a row a, a while back. Just a little bit. Not too many. Uh, and uh, But that's how you learn. And that's one thing I've, I've learned from them. And uh, I think that's why not only do, do I feel like we've had some of the best boxers in our group period hands down but some of the best coaches because you know he not only is he developing boxers but he's developing coaches. coaches and so that's what we do now with our younger kids that maybe don't want to box them or something you know we try to keep them in there and, and we try to uh, make them do mitts with the other kids and uh, hell, uh, uh, there's another kid that's young uh, he might be 19 his name is Eric Know, he used to box and it just wasn't for him. You know, some, some box is just for nobody. Not, I mean, not for that one person. And, uh, you know, I, I have over here Robert doing mitts with, with Virgil and, 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 you know, one of the top trainers in the world. And I'll go back in, in, in Grand Prairie in, in, in Texas and I'll have Eric doing mitts with him. A kid who's just young. Who's just, and, and again, that's, that's developing, that's helping develop a coach because coaches need help too. You know, and so. You know, it's it's a uh, it goes back and forth, it goes back and forth. So that's okay. Just tell us where we can follow you on social media and and, and tell us any closing statements that you want to tell us, Virgil. Uh, on, you can follow me on Facebook, just Virgil Ortiz. On uh, Instagram and on Twitter is Virgil Ortiz SR Senior. Because my son obviously that's Virgil Ortiz. Sure. Um, no, nothing. Just really, uh, you know, follow, you know, just make sure you guys follow this kid. Uh, this is going to be one of the good ones. This is a kid, the one that you know, people, the Mexican people, and people in general, but the Mexican people have been waiting for. I mean, this, this kid, we come from, uh, we don't think we're better than anybody. This is a kid that comes, that you can be in your neighborhood, that you would, you know, he's, one, he's, just, he's one of you. Uh, Follow him because he, he, he's still really good. And he really is. And uh, when he trains hard, he trains hard for himself and his family, but for all of you guys. And uh, that, that's, that's it, man. He's a good kid.